All right, Improvisation Center is back again with 65 Mustang. What's left of it anyway. Yep, it's all stripped down, been stripped down. It's going to get stripped down some more. Why? Because, well, it's going to be getting converted. How so do you ask? Well, hold on. Yep, it's going to be stuck on this Ranger chassis right here. If you remember from past postings and whatnot, a single cab, a single single cab short bed Ranger frame actually has the same wheelbase as vintage Mustangs do. So it actually makes it pretty easy to mount a body on here. Well, maybe not easy, but you don't have to do any modifications to the frame to lengthen or shorten it. But yep, we're gonna stick the 65 body on this frame right here. And in order to do that, I had to start off by removing everything from under the 65. All the running gear, the rear end, springs, all that crap. When we're done, all we're gonna be left with is a unibody. The car's already been stripped out, so there's no other interior crap in there that could be removed. So we have to get all that stuff out from underneath to lighten it, and then we're gonna somehow jack it up high enough to mount it on some posts to hold it high enough to allow us to roll this frame especially with the engine already in it because that'll be one of the next things I do but be able to roll this frame underneath the body in order to start the mounting process so we're gonna go ahead and start tearing shit up underneath that car As stated, there are several things that have to come off here. As you can see, we got all the suspension hardware, brake hardware, sway bars, all that shit's got to come out. The bottom end of the power steering assembly's got to come out, along with the power steering gearbox. All we need to leave out is just the shaft, the steering shaft from the steering column, and even these parts of these shock towers have to come out because, well, the shocks are going to come out. And for all intents and purposes, I'm not even 100% sure how much of this hardware might even remain. I might keep some of this, uh, these little side panels up here for support purposes. Or I might find myself having to make some kind of tube frame. Who knows? We're literally shooting from the hip with this whole project because... I'm sure nobody's ever done a Ranger frame swap for a old Mustang body, so yep, we're pretty much going into uncharted territory here. So go ahead and start tearing out shit. Okay, we got the outer shield of the shock tower off. It's rusted all the shit, garbage. I ended up having to cut the tabs up on the shock in order to even get them free. Uh, couldn't get the mount off down there. Well, the bolts down there, all that shit's rusted all the hell. The shock's probably garbage too. Who knows? It does. Oh yeah, that shock's garbage. But uh, now our next dilemma is that piece of shit right there, coil spring. And anybody that's fucked with coil springs already knows 
those things are like grenades and you got to put a tool on them to take them off and putting the tool on them to take them off is dangerous as hell two kinds of tools you have one that goes in the middle which I prefer and the one that has two pieces preferably for struts that goes on the outside either one of those sucks uh, I've had them pop on me before and it's pretty dangerous shit to mess with those damn things our next option would be to take the upper control arm loose put an impact wrench on that shit see if we can get the upper control arm off and see if this thing will pop out that way going out away from me so we won't have to be in the path of any of this shit uh trying to see what we got going on in here ah fuck it let's put the impact wrench on there and see what happens After taking the nuts off on the control arm and beating on it enough and then doing one little bit of final prying I was able to get the upper control arm to pop free wasn't really as bad as I thought it would be because well that shock held everything in place enough so to have a nice controlled descent but you could see how all this would have went together and you can also see the enormous amount of rust along this frame rail right here and the shock tower this all of this is trash like even for me with angle iron and stuff this would have been an undertaking that's way too hard to really try to do and be able to trust all this shit to hold together so for all intents and purposes our truck frame swap idea is probably the best thing for this vehicle as far as trying to save it so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this shit out of here get this upper stuff out of here get these uh, support bars out of here and then try to get the other side busted free as well and then we could start working on the lower control arm and all the other lower stuff
Okay, got most everything removed from the front here. You can see there is nothing left, not even the motor mount brackets. The latest batch of junk is right there, the power steering, uh, piston, ram assembly, whatever the hell that shit's called. Uh, strut bars, all uh, spindles with the drum brakes, everything is gone. The only thing left is the steering gearbox, and from what I've noted through a little quick research, I have to disassemble the steering column, well more accurately pull the steering wheel off the steering shaft, and then the whole gearbox is supposed to pull out from that tube with the steering shaft. Kind of a crazy ass design, which makes me wonder if I'm even going to be able to reuse that steering column and that wheel. We'll see later on. but. Go ahead and tear that apart real quick and get the steering box out of there. One other thing to make note of with all the stuff gone, this car's a lot lighter. With a couple of guys, you could almost pick this thing straight up in the air if you wanted to. Not going to do that, but it makes me feel better about using an engine crane to lift this thing high enough to get it on our drums and boards here later on. So. That'll be later on. Like I said, next thing is getting that gearbox off. All right, got our steering column out, steering wheel disassembled. That then leaves this whole gearbox right here. All that is out. Now with that, we are officially cleaned out of everything in the front here. Not even the steering remains, so with that, I can now move on to the back and start getting the back off the ground and start pulling the rear end and the leaf springs and all that associated hardware off and get it the same way as we got the front so we can then start getting ready to lift this joker up and get it on the boards. So the work continues. All right. In order to be able to get our rear end off, we had to make a few little preparations and those preparations are getting the rear end of the car off the ground and of course getting the wheels off now normally on any car that i've messed with especially these ones with questionable support issues most of the jacking points on the rear end are the rear end and the leaf springs and all well that's all the junk that has to come out of here. So we can't put jacks or jack stands or anything on the rear end. We have to resort to finding a suitable spot on the body to anchor this thing and jack it up. Only problem there is all this crap is rusted to hell. As you clearly see, the torque box areas here are totally trashed. So in order to, as well as the rocker panels, all this stuff is just bad. Like, look at that right there. That was from an attempt to try to jack it up and put something underneath the torque box area and that just broke even further yet. So I'm going to have to do a lot of body repair even if I do use scrap sheet metal and whatever to patch some of this stuff. There's a lot of body repair that will have to be done in order to even make it look somewhat presentable even in a cheesy, ugly way. But in order to hold this thing up, I had to use one of the 2x6 boards. I think those are 2x6s. Yeah, 2x6 board. Thought they were 2x8s. But I had to use a board with a couple of cinder blocks. I don't know why the hell they call them cinder blocks, because they're not cinders, they're concrete. But anyway, I used the cinder blocks and the board, jacked it up, and then I even took a couple of 2x4 pieces and used them 
propped up against the roof as extra support along this plane right here to help at least maintain some rigidity in here so this thing just doesn't implode on itself under the weight the downward weight of the rear end as well as just gravity in general so with this sketchy jack stand setup done I had to start hacking into here and what I'm probably gonna end up doing is really cutting probably 90% of this shit out of here like the torque box area right here where the front leaf spring mounts are at I'm probably just gonna cut around that area just to free the leaf springs cut the parking brake cables because all this junk is rusted anyway so there's no need to even try to salvage any of this stuff I'm just gonna start hacking and grinding and all that so like I say spring shackle area right here cut that out cable the back end might be a little more easier to recover the spring shackles on the back end I should be able to remove those bolts and in the worst case I just cut through the bolt completely the bolt and the bushing and just get the shackles intact so I don't end up cutting those up because I could reuse those on another car or even sell that stuff to somebody else but after I get all that done then there's just a little bit of brake lines that need to be chopped up and because like I said all the stuff is not being reused we're using all the running gear on the Ranger the worst case scenario here on a side note will be me taking this rear end and cutting and re-welding the spring mounts and shock mounts on it so it could fit right on the Ranger chassis since this is a different ratio rear end allows uh, which allows me to use a three-speed transmission so we don't end up having this thing revving at 3500 rpm at highway speed but for the time being we just need to get everything cleared from this body so we'll worry about that later this is what we got to worry with right now so let me get some tools and start cutting Some because I did that, shackles are pretty much trash anyway. That one is done. Even though, ironically enough, yeah. They are separate bolts. All right, we got the rear spring shackles down and removed completely. All that's left are the little bungs where the bushings used to sit or still sit. Also took a second to go ahead and cut the uh, parking brake cables and the brake line. So all we have left at this point are the front shackles at what's left of the torque boxes. Once I cut into all that rusted metal, We'll be able to get our rear end out of here and maybe even get it out of here easily because the brake drums can kind of act sort of like wheels to help me roll this shit out of here so let me get the hacking
Let's say try to save this to some degree because it could be used for future support. But I'm gonna have to add some metal, that's for sure. Damn, this thing's rough. All right, with a little bit of hacking and grinding and stuff, managed to get the rear end free. As you've seen on the left side, the torque box area was so disintegrated that the spring shackle was already free. I just had to fight the right side, but I got it free in the end, and our rear end is out. So I have to drag this thing to a suitable spot out of my way because the next order of business is going to be to get this thing up on our drums with the board so that'll be our next little batch of uh, footage so let's get set up for that all right got our crane in position got the end of the boom positioned under the middle of the back panel here should be sturdy enough to hold because this really ain't that heavy after all got some old chain wrapped around it to help keep things somewhat sturdy so next move is going to be to lift this thing up let's see how this goes this is sketchy as hell I'm gonna do some sketchy shit do da, do da, hope I can get away with it, oh do da day. Yeah, this is sketchy as hell. We got it resting on the board and the drums. Have to disconnect the crane, but the weight is on the board. So, the whole time I was lifting it up, I'm watching the ramps start to move as the angle changed but everything stayed sturdy the body still stayed sturdy so with that I could disconnect everything and move all this garbage over to the front so we can do the same thing on the front nice nice and sketchy all right we got everything in position on our crane boom chain around the front end had to make doubly sure everything was still pretty sturdy on our rear side so now we could try to jack this crap up on our front end looking at everything trying to see at first I would have tried to put our board across here where the frame rail is at a higher level at the bottom but as you could see there really ain't much of any frame rail left right there so I'm gonna have to see if I could get high enough to get it underneath that low point right there where that old patch is at on both sides so let's get it done
All right, I had the boom on the lower part right here, tried to lift it up and the body slid back just enough for the this point right here to slide off the end of the boom. So I wanted to get the boom at a little bit more of a horizontal angle. Well, it's not horizontal, but it's not at such an extreme downward angle. So I got all the chains re-anchored here. Hopefully I could get it lifted up enough to do what I gotta do. So let's continue. We got the body on a couple boards and drums. Yep, two by six boards, some plastic chemical drums, and an engine crane are what it took to get this thing plenty high enough to have it in a position where we can roll our frame underneath it. Sketchy? Yes. Effective and simple? Yeah. If you don't have an A-frame crane or lift or anything of that nature, got to work with what you got. But we got it all set up. Like I say, the body is light enough to be able to do this type of thing. Now, of course, I'm still not going to trust this thing to stay here forever. I'm going to want to go ahead and get this frame prepped and get it underneath this thing so we can start working on lowering this thing back down even if for no other reason to just get it off these boards and drums we do not want to sit like this too long because after all this is some sketchy shit so yeah we're gonna go ahead and start making our preparations to get the powertrain into the frame plus stand by real quick we took the wheels off of the running gear from the car and put it on our Ranger frame since they are the same bolt pattern after all. So our frame is ready to completely roll free, no flat tires, nothing like that. And one of the things that I will have to do is remove these old motor mounts right here. Uh, research showed that Fox Body V8 mounts will allow that V8 to sit right on the posts where these mounts currently sit other than swapping around to a rear sump oil pan since this area here is open and the front ain't that's all it's really required to get it set up to go in here and I'll probably have to fabricate some kind of makeshift transmission cross member that's not even that big of a deal all things considered with what we're dealing with so go ahead and get that stuff started and get this frame up to the garage so we can get the engine in there engine and transmission all set up so we can get this thing back down here and start mounting the body onto this thing so stand by Decided to go ahead and move the frame over to the build site right here and the plan with the engine is going to be to put the engine in the back of the s10 along with the crane bring it down here and stage it right here and just install it 
right here where I could take my time piddling around with making a motor mount or transmission mount bracket or whatever else I got to do to get the setup in the frame. But with the frame right here, I'm kind of part way done with the placement because, well, the frame is under the car. So I could start looking at this and getting a good idea of what we're working with here. I had to let air out of the rear tires because the rear of the frame, which is a little higher than the rest of the frame, did not clear the bottom of these front sub frames here. So ironically, I placed this board here thinking that I needed to keep the car level. Really, I needed to put the boards right there and have the car at a high angle in the front to allow for clearance. Live and learn. This is a first time project. Also had to space these drums a little bit in order to clear the wheelbase, had them too close together. But we can kind of see what we're dealing with here. And like I say, Ranger single cab short bed frame has the same wheelbase as vintage Mustang, uh, 64 through 73. You can see how our shock assembly here on the Ranger frame lines right up with the shock tower of the car, as well as our rear wheels lining up with the fender wells and the back end. So, like I say, other than having to hack out some metal in places so we can be able to slide everything down, placement shouldn't be that bad. Even the steering, for all intents and purposes, I might have to use a little, uh, one of those universal knuckle thingies, whatever the hell you call them, to compensate for the shaft coming out right there and our steering shaft being right there. No biggie. Uh, this kind of has some play as it is, but we'll probably still have to use a universal joints on that. They make all that aftermarket stuff, so... That's a good thing. Uh, like I said, we also have to pull these old motor mounts out that were from the four-cylinder that was in this truck frame. I think it was a four-cylinder. Don't matter. Neither here or there. But, uh, yeah, like I say, metal's going to have to be removed. But we're also going to have to kind of figure out our mounting situation as far as, like, what I might have to weld in place to allow me to mount to this point right here at the front of the frame. Uh take advantage of that point the that point right there on both sides let's see where's we got another one right there little hockey puck bushing right there i'll probably end up after i reinforce along this inner panel right here with some angle iron i'll probably put some kind of cross piece all the way across there i have to compensate for the transmission hump and all that crap like i say we're gonna have to add a bunch of aftermarket metal in here in order to facilitate the mounting of this body to this frame the rear shouldn't be too much of an issue minus cutting out some old metal especially around the torque box and the front part of the subframes we got enough spacing there like right there where i could probably rest the rest of the rear subframe on top of this frame right here and at least get most of this covered right here now another thing too that i wanted to do with this truck frame was actually add the uh class three hitch i think it's class three you know the heavy duty hitch that goes on there so this thing would actually be able to drag some shit so i'll have to see how that will be set up to see whether i'll be able to hack away any of this extra metal here in the very back or need to leave that there and just go ahead and work around that. But that's all at for a later date. The main thing is getting this thing mounted. Now, of course, this car is not going to have a rear uh, trunk floor gas tank anymore. That's obviously a given if you know the design of a vintage Mustang. So I'll probably end up either... Depending on how the body is placed on the frame, I might go with the fuel tank that came with the Ranger and just figure out some type of filler tube setup, even if it doesn't involve using that port anymore. Or I'll just install an aftermarket fuel cell in here with the tube coming up to the 
port right here. Either way it goes, stock tank's not going back in here, and this floor will probably be patched all up. It would be an interesting thought to put some type of support thing for a spare tire on here, like the original Ranger setup was when it was a truck. That would be cool because then I could contain the spare tire without actually putting a spare tire in the trunk, taking up trunk space. Again, another thing we'll, we'll just have to see when we get to that crossroads. But of course, the trunk's going to have to be patched up near a shitload of sheet metal in there to fix all that up. But all in all, you can see how this whole setup goes together. Get a good little angle right here. This section of the front subframe lines right up with the frame on the truck, on the truck frame here. Try to verify that on this side as well. Yeah, it's a little off. We're gonna obviously have to shift the body a little bit based on our angles and all. As they say, measure twice, cut once. So we know we've got everything lined up properly before we actually do anything permanent. But point is, short bed, single cab Ranger frame is perfect for mounting a vintage Mustang body. So with that, I'm going to get back to the engine because in the process of swapping the oil pan out, I also have to put a rear sump oil pickup tube and screen on there. And I'm using a single piece oil pan gasket not the original four piece that would have been used on that engine so once we get all that done i also have to show you something else with, with regard to the motor mount because we might actually be lucky on the motor mount part but that will be next so stand by all right we got our engine all set up with the rear sump oil pan and pick up all that good stuff and it is down here in front of the frame which is in front of the body and our crane is all set up over it next order of business is going to be mounting this thing I already removed the old motor mount brackets because I need to see how all this stuff is gonna fit I need to see if either a these motor mount tabs here this supposedly custom looking stuff may somehow fit in here or if I could still get away with the old brackets after I take those hockey puck mounts off of the brackets but either way we're not going to know what's going on until we get the engine swinging over neat over this frame right here so go ahead and start lifting We got problem number one already got our engine hanging over the frame here and the oil filter interferes with the steering gearbox now while that's an immediate problem as far as placement it means I'm gonna have to take the oil filter off it also means I'm gonna have to go ahead and acquire one of those uh, remote oil filter kits that has the plate that mounts in place of the oil filter and has a couple hoses and another base to attach the oil filter remotely from the engine minor inconvenience kind of annoying yes but all it means is I got to take this oil filter off so I can continue our immediate task at hand stand by
engine is currently sitting on the old motor mount brackets. I put them back in because, yeah, they needed to go back in. But everything lines up as far as the plates on the 289's motor mounts and the motor mount brackets on the Ranger frame. The only thing is, and this is probably more of a personal bias, but because the motor mount brackets on the Ranger frame are not exactly level, the left side is just a bit higher than the passenger side, the right side. If you look at the engine, it's got a slight lean to the right because, well, the left side's higher than the right side. Now, for all intents and purposes, one might say, who cares? It's in. Deal with it. Me? I don't know. I'm a bit of a stickler for fine details like that, so I would have to figure out what I could do exactly to level the thing off. I could either try to raise the right side up by adding something there, or take this bracket off and do some cutting and re-welding to make it where it sits lower relative to the right side so our engine will be leveled off and more than likely that's what I'm gonna do because for all intents and purposes this engine does need to come down a little bit because of the idea that hopefully everything on the engine will clear the top of the uh, body on the car when we do get everything situated otherwise I might be stuck in a situation where I end up having this body mounted higher on the frame than I want it to be but we'll see again shooting from the hip all right I took our left motor mount bracket chopped it down trimmed it up did a couple little welds on it to hold the pieces together as I need them to be when I do the permanent welding but I wanted to fit the engine first just to confirm that everything looks pretty decent the other side still lines up as uh, I can't get in there good enough probably see that but everything still lines up and when we kind of look at the engine now it's a little bit more level not perfect but it's a lot better than it was so again like I say we're in a little bit of a compromised position here because I don't want to chop too much off of that bracket otherwise might have other issues but went ahead and chopped it down let me take that back off now finish welding it and get all this crap permanently mounted and then we can go ahead and look at our transmission mount situation because if we look at the frame here we could see we got a decent angle to the whole powertrain relative to the angle of our rear end you kind of you get there's like these angles you got to meet with the rear with the uh, drive shaft so when things flex during normal driving you don't put too sharp of a angle on your u-joints so you can prolong the life of your u-joints so you kind of want to have the angle of your powertrain kind of about the same angle as your rear end like let's look at this one more time here that looks like maybe I'd say about five degrees I don't know I might be off but just looking at that you kind of look at that and then you kind of go along in tune with this here I could probably raise the tail up a smidge Right now I just have a couple boards underneath the thing just to kind of hold it up somewhat, but I could probably raise that tail up a bit. Then I'll just have to fabricate a motor mount accordingly. But, yeah, just something else to be aware of doing this type of crap when you're putting in power plants and homemade frames or whatever, trying to get those angles correct with your drive shaft. Somebody out there probably knows the exact terminology for all this, and... I would love to know what those terms are. Seen them before, forgot them, but I know the concept. So, yeah, let me get this crap welded back together. Try to get this crap mounted. Get this frame back underneath the body here. Been babbling long enough. Stand by. All right. Well, for all intents and purposes, we got this engine and transmission mounted in here. It's probably mounted in a 
pretty rednecky, jerry-rigged manner. You come up with your choice of terms, but whatever. Uh, the problem I had, obviously, was with the motor mounting situation. Because even though everything lined up, Ford and their infinite wisdom made these mounting brackets right here where you have to remove them in order to secure your motor mount. So in our case, because everything does not line up in the same angles as the stock stuff does, we had nothing but problems trying to get everything to line up. So what ended up happening is this plate right here where the original 289 setup bolted to the Ranger frame setup, that stuff's not tight because in order to get all this crap together I had to have the nuts loose on the washers holding everything down now the only other option that I could see to remedy this to where I can actually be able to move this engine in and out well for one thing these motor mounts are probably going to be situated such as this motor mount is this is actually a repaired permanent motor mount because this mount broke a long time ago and I ended up drilling two extra holes in there and putting nuts and bolts through the whole thing to hold it all together but uh yeah what will end up happening is both of these motor mounts are going to be permanent mounts first of all secondly I will probably find myself welding all this shit from this plate right here just welding this whole damn thing to this ranger bracket right here and whenever I have to take the engine out I would end up separating these motor mounts from the two bolts on the block itself to get the thing out. And then, in that case, if I, well, because they are going to be more or less permanent mounts, there really isn't the concern with replacing motor mounts. All the stuff would just be stuck together. And by having it situated just like this, once I get my cross member done and everything is situated exactly the way I want it, like I say, I just weld the shit out of all this area right here and that way everything is going to be just permanently fixed at the angles that it is currently in. This way I can lift the engine straight up and out and be able to get it back in with everything being lined up well enough to put the bolts back in on the block. And same thing on this side here, that bolt hold, that stud holding this plate to the Ranger frame here is not tightened all the way because these angles let's see if I can get a good angle here to show what I am talking about this right here can't tighten this all the way up otherwise this gap won't be present none of the stuff above will line up so like I say I will probably find myself just welding all this shit I already stuck a couple of shims in here just for shits and giggles, but I'll probably find myself just welding all this shit together. I gotta put one more bolt in here to hold this these brackets on both sides to hold it all the way to the frame. But once that's all said and done, then I'll have it where I'm not taking these brackets out, nor these mounts right here. And if I did have to take all this crap out, all this is gonna come out in one whole piece. And the engine will be separated from these two bolts holding the block itself to the mounts. But again, everything is in. Crane is disconnected. Next order of business is our transmission cross member. So that will be next. All right. I came up with a solution for our cross member that was actually convenient. Uh, it's a cross member. But this cross member here actually came from the minivan that we stripped down and got a bunch of good parts from. And obviously, this cross member is way too big to fit, but that's where power tools come in. So, what I'm going to end up doing is these tabs right here, I'm going to cut these off, trim them down, weld them together so they could fit these studs on our C4 motor uh, transmission mount you know I'll put that back up there once I get these trimmed down and matched up to this here I could go ahead and put that back up there then I could go ahead and cut this thing down just kind of get a good idea of our height and everything since this thing does taper up which works even better 
and just trim this thing down so I could be able to mount it at our points on the lower parts of this frame rail and make a final product that will fit this frame rail and this transmission where it stands. And then of course I'll have to drill some holes in the frame for the bolt holes and all after I weld all this garbage together and there you go. I don't have to use any angle iron or anything extra. I'm using garbage that I have laying around. So that makes it even cooler. Doing everything essentially for free. So go ahead and get to cutting. tabs off of the cross member trimmed off one of the little wings on either one and evened them up put them on our transmission mount so they're pretty much at about the spacing I need them to be so now I could weld these together and go ahead and move on to the actual cross member bar and start cutting that thing up so I could go ahead and start fitting everything together for our final welding all right, got our base welded up, both sides, and fits like a glove. So now, with that all said and done, I'll put our mount back on the transmission and go ahead and get started on a cross member. All right, what I ended up doing, I cut the ends off like the end thirds of the cross member, leaving just this centerpiece right here. Welded our transmission mount base to it. Got a good weld in all around. So now, what I'll end up doing is bolting this to the, to the uh, mount, and then I could go ahead and start lining up our end pieces and trimming them down as needed so I could weld them up to the centerpiece. So it's coming together. All right, chopped down everything. Got a kind of a rough fitting of the pieces here. Uh, obviously when it's welded all together, it's gonna look ugly as hell, but it will be effective. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is actually lifting the tail of this transmission up a little bit because it's down some with the boards that I have underneath it. It could be at a little bit better of an angle or more horizontal, but it'll also help with this shit too as far as the fitting is concerned. But, you know, like I said, I'll put a jack board. I got the big eight by eight right there. I'll put that underneath it, or that's probably a six by six, whatever. But uh, I'll put that under your jacket up just a little bit, and then I could go ahead and weld everything together as well as uh, fit my holes for the frame so I could get all that drilled out and get this wrapped up so home stretch time
All right, got everything welded up as intended. Like I said, it looks tacky as far as these odd shaped pieces being mated together, but I welded the hell out of them. I took, I welded probably two thirds of the way around on both sides, took the bar off, flipped it over, got the rest of it. I was able to pound this area in a little bit with a hammer once the metal was nice and hot, but got it all filled in plenty of slag in there then I went ahead and started a couple of holes over there and once I got those holes wallowed out with a step bit I went ahead and put the mount on the bottom bolted it up then I was able to go ahead and more easily drill the holes on this side right here because I had the plate on the bottom as a guide and wallowed those out with the step bit put the bolts in got Lock nuts on there, grade 8 bolts, all that stuff is secured. So now our whole thing is nice and tight. Only thing left now is to weld up those motor mount brackets. And we are done with the powertrain installation. So go ahead and get back to burning. All right, we have completed the installation of the powertrain 289 V8 and C4 that was in this car originally into the Ranger frame. We got our transmission cross member done as previously shown. Did a little uh, welding there to reinforce these mount brackets. Took two brackets and made one essentially. Same thing on the other side. Got them all done. I could technically replace these mounts if I want to with regular mounts and just stick with removing the bolt right there and the two bolts at the top to, to remove the actual mount and then just put everything together accordingly. So no real loss there. Transmission mount, same thing. Use it as normal. Jack the transmission up. Swap the mounts out. No biggie. Everything's held in by grade 8 bolts on the cross member. The board is gone underneath. We got an angle decently enough aligned with the rear end. So this thing here is ready to slide back underneath the body. So we could actually move on to our next phase, which is trimming out all the metal and fitting the body to the frame itself and ultimately getting the body attached to the frame. That will be in our next video because this one has been running long enough. So I will leave you with the side of this nice little 289 resting in this ranger frame and until the next time hit the like button subscribe positive comments positive suggestions and stay tuned for the next video which will be putting the body on this frame and doing a whole bunch more metal work so i'm gonna get inside because it's hot as hell out here and i will catch you again soon